Well, definitely after a couple of drinks, um, that was a different, not a different character, but really full on, you know, just really stubborn and standing by his own ideas, not really willing to listen anymore. Um, so yeah, for that, he was definitely um, an eccentric character. There was a time I was in a bar, <laughs> it was me, him and another friend of mine, we were all drinking, as a Japanese girl. And she had, uh, which is it's basically like a straw hat, and there was loads of candles everywhere. And <laughs> he kind of just, in the middle of a sentence, just took the hat and put it on a candle, and then sort of muttered something about fashion and being dead. And then there was a massive argument. And it was it was kind of funny at the time, but kind of potentially dangerous because we were downstairs. There was a time where we were eating in a um, seafood restaurant up in Dalston. And um, we ordered the seafood medley. And, and the waiter brought out the seafood medley. Um, Evelyn, instead of having the plate put down in front of him, he took the plate off the waiter, threw the seafood back into the kitchen, started screaming about how you know, you shouldn't treat seafood in that way. It was beyond me completely. It was the first instance, you know. Obviously, he was prone to these bursts of, uh, I don't know what you know, I can't think of a way to describe them properly. Um, I suppose, um, je ne sais quoi. Really, uh, he, every now and again, something would happen and he would just totally do something that wasn't, well, normal, I suppose. Um, and we got banned from the seafood restaurant in Dalston. We went on holiday together on a narrow boat um, on, the, on the Avon. And um, he insisted that all of us, all four of us, including my mother, were, were naked for the whole of the holiday. The last time he came in, I said, you really should stop coming in here. Um, it's, not, it's not very nice. It doesn't make me feel very comfortable. And he left and I didn't see him for a little while. And then one day I was working on my own on a Sunday and he came in on his own and um, explained that what he really would like to be able to do would be to try on some of the clothes in the shop, some of the women's clothes, that when he was watching the women getting changed. It was the, it's the clothing and sort of the art of women's dressing that he was enjoying. Um, obviously he's enjoying it in a sexual level. Um, and, um, but he was quite sweet. He wasn't, I didn't find him um, intimidating in any way. So um, I said, yeah, that's, that's fine. I've had guys before trying things on in here. And um, so then he's just started just coming in, just like now and then he would come in and he would try some of the things on, usually some of the more expensive dresses. He had quite good taste. Um, yeah, so he, sort of, you know, I gradually got to sort of see quite a, you know, quite a sort of shy, sweet man who just enjoyed the feel of the fabrics and kind of, he got a sexual pleasure out of it, but um, it wasn't anything, um, it, wasn't, it was nothing frightening or he didn't intimidate me in any way. Sometimes, sometimes he, he, he would play other characters. He would, he would and maybe put on a dress or pretend to be my mum. Lots, lots of things. He had, he had, he had many um, facets to his personality. Many, many sides. Many sides to Evelyn. Many sides a lot of people didn't get to see. Um, I think I got to see more, more sides to Evelyn than most. Apart from once I uh, met him in the afternoon, just by chance again, because we sort of like frequent the same places. They said he was going to a fruit market in the morning, so he needs to get up early. And I'm thinking, I mean, we've got a part time job selling fruit. I said, So, what, what's that all about? He goes, No, no. I says, he said, The oh, fuck? He said, I'm not interested in that. I said, I just want some ripe melons to take home and play with. I thought, oh, So I didn't even bother fucking asking him anymore. I thought, Fuck this. Boy's fucking mental. <laughs> it, was, it was a fancy dress party, and it was like a Roman theme, and everybody was wearing sheets as, you know, togas, and uh, 
there, there was a point where it was kind of it was becoming more and more, I don't know, sort of <laughs> less like a toga, more like a dressing gown. It was it was coming loose. Yeah, he had a habit of stripping off when he was drunk, uh, but he loved it. You know, he didn't. He just didn't care. It just flowed out of him. You know, it was just there naturally. You know, but that was kind of refreshing. Uh, but also, you know, it could go too far sometimes. And and you you know, everyone would kind of laugh at him and and you know, be in the in the spirit of things. But you know, everyone would be. He would think that everyone was laughing with him, but really they were laughing at him. Um, and that was quite hard sometimes because he just really didn't. He didn't. I mean, he he probably didn't care anyway, but. But great fun. Um, as I explained to the court a, a few years ago during the case, um, I could I could describe him naked very very accurately, um, which I did. They obviously they asked me to do so, and I I told them all about um, all about Molly. He had a little mole, a little mole on his shaft, um, from two thirds of the way down his shaft. Um, Little Mole is coming out to play. He used to sing, come on, come and play with little Molly. Touch, touch him, touch Molly, pat Molly on the head. I used to pat Molly on the head. I patted Molly on the head several times. Sometimes. I said, yes, give Molly a stroke. Stroke him, stroke Molly. Stroke, stroke Molly in his, and his, his surrounding area. I often, often I became quite good friends with Molly, in fact. Well, he had a massive cock. You know, let's just say, he's not John Holmes, but yeah, he had a big fucking cock and he knew how to fucking use it. The women loved it, the men loved it. I'd be fucking ass, up the wherever, fucking in the mouth and tits in the ear, fucking awesome. <laughs> it was a whole he'd fuck it. You know, that's when I learned how he loved the melons. No, it was a kind of definite, let's just get on with it. But you know, that was fine by me, I didn't mind. He used to say, it is better to give than to receive. But I think it grossly misunderstood its original meaning. I would be surprised if he just winked both both ways, or you know, he made a few comments. No, uh, no, I know, I know. Uh, he's a bit. Um, I don't know. He's a bit. Uh, I don't know. Open, but um, not 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 me. No, no. He's, he's he's from what I understand. He's he's more into more into women. I I saw him naked on two occasions. Um, both occasions lasted quite some time um, and the first time it was quite shocking as um, I didn't know he I didn't know he was into all that um, the second time obviously I was more used to it and um, it was a bit uh, easier to take um, physically no Unmarried. He was sensitive. I was I was particularly sensitive. I was just a thirteen year old boy, don't forget. Um very, very young, fragile skin at that age. Um so if there was any sensitivity it was more from from my part, but he was he was generous. Mm. So, so yeah, selfish, exactly, 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 exactly. Um, we had a, a, a time at school where we were very close. And, um, But I think it's uh, one of those experiences that's made me the best.